A cavernous malformation uh, is a type of vascular malformation uh, that uh, occurs in the brain, uh, uh, the brain stem or the spinal cord. So it can, they can really occur anywhere uh, in the nervous system. They usually present with uh, localized bleeding uh, right around the lesion, so they can present with a sudden severe headache. Uh, they can cause seizures, um, and uh, they can grow uh, with time and cause uh, pressure symptoms in, in some rare occasions uh, of, of giant or very large cavernous malformations. So uh, they're particularly uh, uh, apparent on MRI scans. Uh, a CT scan will show them if they're larger. Um, and bright on, on the CT scan, but when the MRI scans first came into use, uh, they were scanning a lot of patients for different conditions and found cavernous malformations that were just unruptured or incidental in a lot of the different patients. So cavernous malformations can either be discovered uh, by scans that are obtained for a, another reason or uh, headaches or if the patients have bleeding episodes. Um, they can be located, as I mentioned, anywhere in the brain or spinal cord. And the bleeding episodes from cavernous malformations tend to uh, not be as severe as bleeding episodes from aneurysms or AVMs. In other words, they're almost never uh, fatal when a first bleed occurs, but they may be confined to the area right around the cavernous malformation and can cause um, a sudden enlargement and pressure uh, symptoms. They can also cause seizures uh, because the, the, the uh, iron um, and the blood breakdown products is an irritant to the brain, so patients can present with seizures from cavernous malformations. If uh, the cavernous malformation uh, bleeds repeatedly uh, and uh, uh, is accessible for surgery, the preferred treatment is surgical removal, which uh, gets rid of the cavernous malformation completely um, and prevents it from bleeding in the future. And actually, if the patient has seizures, it actually reduces the seizure risk in the future to have the cavernous malformation uh, completely removed. Uh, radiosurgery is not uh, effective, uh, particularly in treating uh, cavernous malformations. Um, uh, and so we normally do not choose radiosurgery uh, treatment for this particular lesion. Uh, it's not uh, able to be treated by embolization, uh, injecting particles into it, for example, because the, the blood supply in the cavernous malformation is very slow and under low pressure, so it's not amenable to that treatment. So surgical removal really is the only effective treatment uh, for cavernous malformations. The decision to uh, treat a cavernous malformation depends on a lot of different factors. If they're uh, discovered incidentally just on a, a scan that was obtained for another reason and they haven't caused a problem, uh, we'll often elect to observe those. Uh, when they were first, uh, it was first apparent that they were easily detected by MRI scans. Uh, there was a study done at the Cleveland Clinic where they followed out many patients that, that had them incidentally discovered, and the future bleeding rate was on the order of 0.7% per year. In other words, um, less than 1% a year of those cavernous malformations, if they hadn't caused symptoms, went on to bleed in the future. So it doesn't make sense to take a, a risk of um, removing them um, if they're just discovered incidentally. However, um, if the cavernous malformation does bleed, uh, presents with seizures or other symptoms or has repeated bleeds, then the rebleeding rate goes up significantly and it, it does favor, uh, the risk benefit ratio does favor treatment in most cases. Well, cavernous malformations can be sporadic, they can just occur in anybody, or there is a hereditary form uh, which is passed down uh, through. Uh, generations and they've genetically mapped this back to some founder genes that were uh, discovered to, uh, to uh, cause of changes in the vascular bed that 
precipitates the formation of cavernous malformations. And the hereditary ones um, uh, may be single or they may be multiple and they tend to be more likely uh, to have multiple uh, malformations um, in this group of patients. Uh, most of the ones that we see though are the non-hereditary type and um, they may either present uh, incidentally or may present with a bleed or a seizure. Uh, typically the bleed from a cavernous malformation is not a fatal or disabling bleed but causes a sudden severe headache and could, can cause a stiff neck. Um, again, can cause patients to end up seeking medical attention right away because the headache is so unusual and so severe. And if these happen repeatedly, uh, scans can be obtained um, and they'll often either detect enlargement or new blood in the cavernous malformation. And if this happens, this is usually an indication to get the cavernous malformation removed surgically if it is in an accessible location and a safe location to remove. Signs and symptoms of cavernous malformations really depend on where they are in the brain. Uh, they can occur in the, the cerebral hemispheres, which is the top part of the brain. They can occur in the cerebellum, which is the back part that controls balance. They can even occur in the brain stem and in the spinal cord, so they can present with weakness if in cases that present in the spinal cord or sensory disturbance. In the brainstem, they can present with cranial nerve disturbances, so droopy eyes, double vision, uh, visual problems, um, swallowing problems, facial paralysis, those types of things. Those are, are, are symptoms typically that are seen in patients with brainstem cavernous malformations that either enlarge or bleed. Regarding treatment of cavernous malformations, we utilize uh, microsurgery with a high-powered microscope and also a localizing uh, 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 apparatus where we can precisely localize the location to minimize the uh, uh, damage to surrounding brain structures. And then once we reach the cavernous malformation, uh, we use a laser uh, to shrink it down and dissect it away from the, the tissue uh, which is around it. Uh, this laser technique is particularly helpful in cavernous malformations that are in the brain stem or spinal cord where there's very, uh, there's very delicate functional tissue around the edges of the cavernous malformation. The laser uh, allows us to peel it off uh, and remove it effectively without, uh, with minimal damage to these uh, surrounding structures. The success rate of uh, complete removal of cavernous malformations is extremely high, uh, over 95%. The bottom line is the cavernous malformations are, um, are lesions that need to be uh, recognized and treated. They need to be seen by a neurovascular specialist uh, to provide the best um, guidance for patients regarding their treatment options.